Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome everyone here in the sanctuary and everybody who's watching live online. Uh, welcome to the sanctuary of Montgomery United Methodist Church, the Welcome Church. I'm Pastor Tony and I'm <clears throat> very privileged to be ministered to this congregation. Well, my friends, today is the 1st of May, 2022, uh, a beautiful day in spring. <clears throat> and we are here to celebrate spring and celebrate joy. And so let's take a moment to say hello to God and to thank him for this day. Let us pray. Dear Lord, our God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for the beautiful day you've given us. And we thank you for the gift of music, music that stirs our souls and lifts our hearts to you. Bless Shay now, we ask, and everyone who participates and everyone who listens, that they may be blessed by the joy of music, which is your gift to us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we are here to celebrate springtime. <clears throat> and uh, I just have a few announcements before we get going. Uh, for those of you who are new with the church, the restrooms are through those doors and straight down the hall. And if you go a little farther down the hall, you'll come to our banquet hall, and that's where our uh, refreshments will be. I hope all of you can join us for a time of refreshment after the program and uh, get a chance to say hello to each other and say hello to Shay. Today we're giving thanks for a young gentleman who is uh, an up-and-coming concert organist, one of the finest organists in the state, and he's going to take us on a musical journey today. He is the principal organist and choir master of Faith Lutheran Church in uh, New Providence. He's been featured on the Pipe Dreams organ radio show. Um, <clears throat> he's part of the Ocean Grove Connection and has played there many times. <clears throat> he is also the interim director of the Philo Musica uh, Choral Group, and um, he's uh, going to take us on a musical journey today. He's going to take us on a musical journey to the great cathedrals of Paris and Germany and England. And uh, it's going to be an exciting and fun journey. So he's uh, ready to go. So I'm inviting you, without further ado, to um, fasten your seatbelts, make sure your seats are in the upright position, and prepare for a wonderful journey. Here to take us on that journey is Mr. Shea Veloso. Would you put your hands together and welcome him?
Thank you very much. That was the Toccata from 10 Pieces for Organ by the French composer Eugène Gigou. Um, he's sort of, uh, you could almost call him romantic, but um, in France, this, ser this kind of organ music uh, from this time period is often referred to as uh, the French symphonic uh, repertoire. And though this wasn't part of uh, one of the larger organ symphonies by some of the composers like Vierne and Vidor, uh, it is still in that same style. Uh, that was movement number four from the 10 pieces. So if you can believe it, that's actually followed by six more pieces. Uh, the next piece that I'm going to play for you is by uh, Alexander Gilmont, who uh, was a very talented composer. He uh, produced a wealth of repertoire for the organ, um, including a number of uh, sonatas for solo organ, some of which were transcribed into symphonies for organ and orchestra. The movement I'm going to play is a very peaceful, quiet movement from his first uh, sonata uh, called Pastoral. And a pastoral is kind of a light, lilting, quiet piece, often in com usually in compound meter and with some low droning bass notes that go on. And so in this piece, you'll hear a number of different flute stops, which are imitative of orchestral flutes. Um, you'll hear some string stops, which are, in a way, uh, imitative of uh, the orchestral strings, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Uh, an interesting stop called the Vox Humana, which means human voice, and though I don't want any human voices that sound like the stop in my church choir, um, <laughs> it really adds a wonderful effect that's very... Uh, uh, it's very uh, pertinent to this type of uh, repertoire from this period. Um, so I hope you enjoy this uh, pastoral, and uh, it'll start out with the oboe uh, being played in duet with itself and then ag against a uh, clarinet-like stop.
The next piece I'll play for you uh, goes back in, to the same country, but uh, to a different time period of the French classical. Uh, Louis Nicolas Clarembault uh, wrote this piece, and the organs of the French classical era generally did not have uh, a large pedal division. Most of the time, they didn't have any at all, and if they did, uh, it was only maybe an octave of pedals with a few stops to solo out a voice or something like that. It wasn't for uh, the purposes of bass lines and big solos and uh, thunderous passages. And so there's no pedal part at all to this one, uh, but it is, it's called a dialogue for the treble and bass of the trumpet stop. And uh, while I'm not using uh, I, any of the trumpet stops, I'm using a different kind of reed sound and sort of bolstering it up with some uh, flutes to give it a sort of warmer sound to be kind of a softer trumpet. And so you'll hear on the lowest keyboard, you'll hear uh, a couple of soft stops accompanying it, and then the treble and the bass of this trumpet sound sort of talk back to each other in dialogue. So I hope you enjoyed this charming little piece dialogue for the treble and bass of the trumpet. To end this section of the program that features uh, works from France, we really go into the very formal period of the French symphonic repertoire here. Uh, Charles-Marie Vidor was the organist at Saint-Sulpice in Paris, which is a very large Romanesque building, not a cathedral, but cathedral-sized, and has probably the most famous organ in France. Uh, he was the, um, the interim organist there for something like 70 years, almost all of his career, and they never upgraded him to titular organist. Um, but this is from his sixth symphony for organ, the next two pieces, and I ask that you just um, applaud at the end of both of them and not in between. Um, I'm playing them a little bit out of order. I'm playing the fourth movement first and then the first movement. Uh, the fourth movement is a really beautiful uh, cantabile, which is a, a slow, soft, uh, song-like movement. Um, and you'll hear something called uh, an harmonic flute, which is sort of accompanying things, which is a flute stop that is, if a pipe of the same pitch from another rank of pipes were this tall, the harmonic flute is double the length, and it's very rich in harmonics, but they bore a hole right in the middle of it so that the column of air speaks at the correct pitch. So the length doesn't add uh, any, uh, you know, it doesn't make the pitch lower, but it makes it fuller and richer. And then it will be, uh, the melody will be on the oboe stop, and then you'll hear some strings as sort of a secondary accompaniment. 
Uh, so I hope you enjoy this beautiful piece, the Cantabile, and then we'll end with the first movement, which is, um, I forget, they don't really have names, but they're more so tempo markings, and it's allegro something or other like that. And there's a really wonderful majestic theme that comes in, and then a page or so later he introduces the secondary theme, which is much faster, and throughout the piece uh, weaves and juxtaposes the two of them against each other and until it comes all together in a big grand conclusion. So I hope you enjoy these two movements from Jean-Marie Vidor's Sixth Organ Symphony.
Thank you. We'll move next to England, um, but sort of Germany, uh, because uh, though uh, Handel is always thought of as an English composer because he lived almost all of his life in, or at least his professional life in uh, England, he was born in Germany as Georg Friedrich Handel, and he changed his name and made it sound a little bit more English when he moved to England. And uh, there was an occasion uh, where he worked for um, I can't remember who it was, but some royalty of some sort um, who had this big party on a barge out in the water, and there was another one next to it on which the orchestra sat, and because it was on the water, it was named the water music, and uh, it was several suites of pieces. Um, and so I'm going to play for you a couple uh, of those pieces now, and again, I'll ask you to wait till the end of all of them uh, to applaud. Uh, we'll start out with this nice little... Uh, almost minuet-like uh, section where you'll hear the principal chorus of the organ, which is the foundation of organ tone, accompanied uh, by these little interjections uh, on a French horn sound, which I've made by taking uh, an eight-foot flute and an eight-foot oboe together to make it sound sort of French horn-like. Uh, the next movement is a wonderful air. Uh, all of these are fairly familiar. Um, the next two movements are sort of grouped together, a bori and then um, uh, sometimes this one's called an allegro uh, or a horn pipe. Um, and the bori is very special to me. It's my favorite movement of all of this. Uh, but when I was very young, um, my mother and I used to watch the show, The Frugal Gourmet. And uh, this was the theme song. The bori was the theme song for The Frugal Gourmet. And so when I hear this, uh, I think of my mother when I was very little and watching that together. And sometimes when I cook, I put it on just because it makes me feel like I'm the frugal gourmet, I don't know. <laughs> and then um, there's a nice little minuet after that, and then ending with the very famous, uh, probably the most famous movement of all, uh, the hornpipe. So I hope you enjoy this suite from Handel's Water Music.
Oh, yes, come out again, Shay. They want to applaud for you. Well done. Bravo. God bless you. A standing ovation mid-concert. Well done, sir. Thanks. We're going to stay in England for a while, and uh, we're going to go over to Westminster Abbey. The year is 1951, the year of my birth. But even better yet, it's the coronation of the Queen of England. Sir Ray Fawn Williams has been given an extraordinary task. He's been asked to write an anthem for the coronation of the Queen of England. The eyes of the world would be in the Westminster Abbey that day. It had to be the strongest piece he could find. It had to be the most powerful piece he could write about. And so he produced this piece of music, the Old 100th Psalm Tune. This church is blessed to have not one, but two pipe organs. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little while. But uh, you'll be hearing from the Shidi Tribute Pipe Organ in the West Gallery of our church uh, by Shea in a little while. And right now, we are going to play both organs together. We've had a special request in this uh, concert that since we have two organs, why don't we make them both sound together? Well, it'll be a little bit of a reach for Shea alone, so uh, he has allowed me to help him uh, and uh, to assist on this piece. But that's not all. There's more. We need you. We need you to make this piece even more glorious. And so, those of you who are singers, maybe you're familiar with this piece, maybe not, we have music for you today. And uh, while I make my way up to the West Gallery, uh, Karen is going to be distributing the music. So if you would like to sing along, I invite you to, um, to raise the hand and Karen will bring you some music. Keep your eye on Shay, he'll keep us all together and let's make the Lord's praise glorious.
my favorite composers, Percy Whitlock. Um, he was more so known as a theater organist than a church organist, though in his short lifespan he wrote quite a lot of works that until fairly recently uh, were largely forgotten. And uh, there are three different aspects to Percy Whitlock or his real Englishness to him, which you hear in his music, his playful spirit, but also his very kind and gentle soul, which is what you'll hear in this next piece, which is an elegy uh, or a piece written in memory of somebody. And uh, it's the second movement of his symphony for organ and orchestra. Uh, and this is a transcription for solo organ. And so you'll hear lots and lots of string sounds coming from both sides up here. Um, and when I say strings, they have a little bit of a kind of rough and rosiny sound, but each string stop is paired with the celeste, which is tuned just a little bit sharp, which gives it a warm, undulating sound, uh, imitative of the orchestral string section, which never really plays completely in tune with each other, which is why it has that shimmering sound. Um, so I hope you really enjoy this uh, very orchestral piece, The Elegy by Percy Whitlock. And now, friends, I'd like to take a moment of your time to uh, tell you about this evening's offering. Uh, Bob and Missy, would you uh, bring forth our uh, offering table and plate? <clears throat> Here at the Welcome Church, instead of having ushers go among the pews, we invite people to bring their gifts forward. And that's what I'm going to invite you to do in just a few moments. Uh, there's no admission for this concert, and uh, you're absolutely welcome. But if you'd like to help us out, there's three things that your gift can do. Number one, it can help underwrite the cost of this concert. And number two, it could be seed money for future concerts so we can have more fun with music here at the Welcome Church. And third, a portion of every dollar that's received today will go to the Ukrainian Relief Fund of our church. We are helping United Methodist churches in Europe, in the Ukraine, in Poland, uh, churches nearby the um, folks that are uh, in refugee status, and they're helping them in a way that uh, churches can in a special way. So that's part of your every gift. <clears throat> also, my friends, take a look in your program tonight. You see the Welcome Church concert card. We sincerely hope that you will fill this out at this time. And what is this? This is uh, a way that we can let you know about future concerts here. We think that we have a musical treasure here at the Welcome Church, and we want to share it with you. So if you'd like us to notify you by email of future concerts, please fill this out and let us know. Also, there's an opportunity to let us know how you heard about this concert. Did you hear about it from a friend? Did you see a flyer? Uh, how many heard about it on the radio? Oh, that's good, because we didn't have a radio announcement. <laughs> anyway, uh, please let us know how you heard about it. And if you have any uh, thoughts or greetings for the performer, we'd love to hear them too. As you're filling that out, um, and I invite you to bring that forward together with your offering in a moment, let me just say a word about the instruments in this church. Montgomery United Methodist Church is blessed with not one but two full pipe organs. Uh, the front organ is celebrating its 18th birthday, believe it or not, uh, this season. Uh, 18 years ago, that instrument went in. Uh, deep buried in the pipework of the organ is a Cassavant organ uh, built in 1941, just around the beginning of the World War. People were still devoting their attention to music, and today it's here. Um, the Shidey Tribute pipe organ that is in our West Gallery is the gift of Mrs. Judith McCarr Shidey. And uh, she is the widow of doc Dr. William H. Scheide. It was Palm Sunday a few years ago uh, when a member of our choir who was singing that day came to me and said, does the name Scheide ring a bell to you? And uh, I said, does it ever? Scheide, the benefactor of Princeton University, the benefactor of the Westminster Choir College, and so many other institutions, it sure does. Mrs. Scheide, uh, his widow, uh, is living in a house that uh, they need to downsize. And so we are, she is looking for a church that is interested in organ music, that knows something about it, 
and she might make a donation of the organ to that church. And I said, volunteer, volunteer. And so uh, the organ is here today, I'm happy to say. Uh, that man is with us who told me about it, Sam Sapienza. Thank you, Sam. We'll always be grateful to you for that wonderful suggestion. Uh, and so at this time, my friends, as uh, Shea continues to play this wonderful concert, I invite you to take your filled out concert card and your gift and to bring it forward to the offering plate. Let us put our gifts together as we listen to the beautiful music.
Now, if you look at your program, it still looks like you're really in for quite a long night here. But uh, the next few pieces are very short pieces, which I'll play on the back organ. Um, that organ was built in a time period where there were new ideas about organ music, which were really kind of old ideas, uh, bringing back ways of uh, clarity to the sound and playing music the way it might have been played in boxed <clears throat> a box time. And so the organ was built and designed and voiced uh, to sort of have that sound to it. Uh, so you'll hear, uh, when I attack a note on this organ, it's a very smooth attack. And when I attack, when I hit the note on the back organ, it almost has a little bit of a clucky kind of sound uh, for clarity of pitch, uh, which is called chiff. And and that sort of thing. So I'm going to play four chorale preludes for you, uh, three of them from a book called The Little Organ Book, which Bach wrote out these improvisations, basically, and gave them to his students so they'd have kind of a, a foundation of stuff done. Uh, I was thinking about just singing the chorale tune through, but I'm uh, getting a little gravelly, so that's not going to happen. I'm going to just quickly play through one verse of the chorale, or the hymn, uh, so you can hear what it would have sounded like and how it might have been accompanied, and then the prelude that is based on that chorale. So there will be four of those that I'll play for you upstairs. As Shea makes his way up to the shiny pipe organ, um, I just wanted to point out that for those of you who are familiar with the organ world a little bit, uh, we are so blessed and so fortunate to have uh, these two instruments. And for those of you who recognize the name Virgil Fox or E Power Biggs, Virgil would have loved this organ and E Power Biggs would have loved that organ. Uh, the Baroque organ that has a lot of chiff, as uh, Shay mentioned, which we organists love, uh, is a delight and a joy. And so let us listen for the music of J.S. Bach.
as Shea makes his way safely down from the loft, uh, I'd like to invite you once again to uh, a little reception in our banquet hall, which is straight through those doors and down the hall. Uh, after the concert, uh, Shea and I will be standing over by the book stand to greet you and um, uh, just to say hello. And if you need to make a quick exit, if you know what I mean, uh, you can go out this way and go around to the hallway there. Uh, we are so delighted that you are here and we're so delighted for the musical that mastery of Shea Veloso. Isn't he wonderful? God bless you. <laughs> and so delighted that uh, you're, you're here tonight. Shay, what will you play for us next? What I think is one of Bach's most monumental works, the Passacaglia in C minor. And a Passacaglia is kind of a very, generally a slow dance in three, four, and there's a theme down in the bass, and then a set of variations. Um, and so this piece has exactly that, and it builds and builds and builds, and then there's a diminuendo, and you think it stops, and then it kicks back in again. And um, a lot of Bach's works were called Preludes and Fugues, uh, which was sort of a, an improvised sounding piece, um, which was sort of a standalone thing almost, and then a more metrically uh, strict um, fugue, which is a subject uh, or a theme that keeps getting developed and developed throughout. Um, and so the, there are 20 some odd variations in this Passacaglia. And then the final set of variations is a fugue, uh, which is a double fugue, which has two subjects that he intertwines, um, which keep, again, keep building and building and building. Um, and then it stops on a very unexpected chord and then comes all to a grand conclusion. So I hope you enjoy this monumental work by Johann Sebastian Bach, Passacaglia in C minor.
Oh, please stay standing and let's have a wonderful encore together. Uh, hymn number 89 in your hymnal, a great hymn of praise to the Lord. And let your voices ring like bells. One, two, and four. Hymn number 89, verses one, two, and four. And uh, for everybody, uh, you may sit down for just a second. Uh, you are invited to inspect the organ. If you're an organist, you may play. Uh, if you'd like to go up and see the shitey organ, you may do that. And uh, we, hope you, we hope you had a great time. Right now, we have a special presentation for Shay. Shay, come on up. <clears throat> Shay, these are for you. And um, uh, the uh, flowers symbolize the colors of the Ukrainian flag, and uh, the pink flowers symbolize uh, uh, a special tribute to your wife and daughter. And uh, uh, have Shay tell you the story of uh, the interrupting cow and his <laughs> daughters that compose opera on the spot. Let's say one more thank you to Shay Veloso. <laughs> <laughs> 